Okay, a 70 kilogram box is initially at rest at the bottom of a rough uh, plane at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. The box is pulled up, da 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 da. The force applied to the rope is 700. The box is being pulled over a distance of four meters, okay. Uh, the kinetic friction force between the box and the plane is 178.22 Newtons. Okay, this is actually quite an easy question. Usually they don't give us all of this. Draw a labeled free body diagram for the box as it moves up the plane. Okay, so guys, the free body diagram, um, that's pretty easy. We've got applied force, normal force, uh, gravity perpendicular. Trust me, if you have a question, I'm about to answer it. Gravity parallel. And then there would obviously be a little bit of friction force. Now, I get a lot of questions from students saying, Kevin, uh, my teacher does this and my teacher does that. And um, my teacher puts FG like that. Or my teacher calls it FN and not N. Guys, did you know that in the test, they are going to give you answers for multiple different ways. The only thing that you are not allowed to do is the following. Never ever put FG going down and then also FG parallel and FG perpendicular. That is not allowed. Either, either you are gonna choose to do these two together or you are gonna choose to do this one but you cannot do both combinations, okay? That is what you're not allowed to do. And students get very nervous about this. Um, so I've actually got something for you guys. Uh, just give me a second. Right, I took a screenshot of a typical memo so that you guys can see for yourself what they do in the exams. Um, okay, so in this exam, they used FG going down, but then look what they say here under the notes accept the components for gravitational force. What that means is that if you use the components instead, then you are gonna get your marks. Look at this guys, FG, you don't have to say FG, you can say FW, W, 58.8, N, weight, MG, gravitation force. There are so many different things that you are allowed to do. There is no one correct answer. So your teacher and someone else's teacher and myself, we might all do different ways, but all of them are taken in the exams. Okay, so don't stress about that um, if you see something like that. And if your teacher says, no, you have to do it like this, they're talking nonsense. Okay, I'm proving it to you right now. This is an official exam memo. All right, let's go back to that. All right, so here we were, guys, we did a free body diagram. Now, did you know that a free body diagram is actually your best friend? Trust me, if you know how to get your free body diagram correct, it becomes your best friend for the rest of the question. I used to think when I was a student, ah, oh, another free body diagram. But now I realize that if you get this correct, you can use this to help you in the entire question. Trust me, it works. Okay, so let's quickly fill in all this information for the next part of the question. Um, four meters. Calculate the work done on the box due to the friction force. Okay, so we know that work is equal to F delta X cos theta. That is the basic formula for work, and that will always be given to you on the formula sheet. Now, they only want the work done due to friction. So what we do is we can put the force of friction over here, delta x cos theta. So the, um, the force of friction is 178,22. 178,22. The distance that we are moving up the slope is four meters. Now, not cos 30, guys. That is not the way work works. Um, the way that you work out the angle when you're using this formula is you need to do the following. You look at the direction of motion. So we know that we are being pulled up the slope. We're being pulled up the slope. But what is friction doing? Well, if we go back to our free body diagram, friction is always acting against us. So that is a 180 degree direction because we're going up the slope, but friction is going down the slope. And so that is a 180 degree angle. And so we will say cos of 180.
80 degrees. Then we can go ahead, type this all in on the calculator, and we get negative 712.88 joules. We're not going to say 712 to the left. Work does not have direction. It is a scalar, not a vector. So we leave the answer just like that. OK, guys, so it says use energy principles to calculate the speed of the box after it has moved four meters. So energy principles, um, that means you can either use W net equals to W net equals to change in EK, or you could use WNC equals to change in EK plus change in EP. Any one of those that you like, it doesn't really matter. You will get to the same answer if you know how to use the formulas. I'm going to use this one over here. It's more popular among students. Um, OK, so four meters, 178.22. OK, so in, in W net, we need to look at our free body diagram again. Um, Guys, remember how long we spent doing this a few months ago? We did W net so many times in our live events about a month or two ago. Um, so for those of you that attended this, you should be really good at this right now. Okay, so what we have is uh, we said there was an applied force, uh, FG parallel and FG perpendicular. I mean, friction, sorry, friction, and then FG perpendicular and then F normal or normal force. OK, so if so, which forces do we need to use? We are going to have to look at uh, applied force, parallel, and friction, because they are moving in this direction. And that's the direction that we are moving. So we're going to say here, W applied plus W friction plus W uh, gravity parallel equals delta ek. Now remember the formula for work is f x cos theta. Um, I've got a question from a student asking if I could also use the other formula. Um, I will do that, okay? Just in case some of you would like to have a look at that. No problem. I love using both formulas. I love showing students that it doesn't really matter. You just need to know how each formula works. Okay. So um, now what we use is we use this formula over here, but I'm using this formula now for this one, for this one, and for this one. So what that will look like is um, F applied delta X cos theta plus the force of friction. Oh, guys, we don't have to go fill this one in. This is what we worked out in the previous question, the work of friction. That was where we got the minus 712.88. So I'm just going to put that in straight away. OK, and then for gravity parallel, you would have to use FG parallel delta X times cos theta. And then EK is going to be half MV squared final minus half MV squared initial. Now, do you guys remember FG parallel? FG parallel is always equal to MG sin theta. Okay, now we just go full everything in. It's going to get fun. So we say 700 times by the distance, which is four meters. Now, this object is going up the slope. And the applied force is also going up the slope. So that'll be cos zero minus 712.88 plus FG parallel. So the mass is 70, gravity is 9.8, sin of 30 degrees. That's only this part over here, okay? Then I carry on with the distance, which is four meters. And now um, if we look at our free body diagram, we're going, we're going in this direction, but parallels acting backwards. So that would be another cos 180, cos 180. Then we can say equals to a half. Now the mass is 70. The final velocity, uh, that's what we're looking for, minus. Now they said that the box is pulled up from uh, rest. Where did they say that? Where did they say that? There we go. OK, so we can say that the initial velocity will be 0. OK, and now I'm just going to type all of this on my calculator up till here. So let's quickly do that. OK, and that gives us 715.12 
equals to now on the right hand side, this is a half of 70, half of 70. So that's going to be 35 v squared. And then I'm just going to quickly calculate v squared. I'm just going to divide by 35, take the square root, and we should get a um, initial velocity. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, no, that is correct. Sorry. <laughs> Final velocity. My bad. Final velocity of 4.52 meters per second. Okay, guys, so that's how you would do it that way. Now, I'm also going to do this exact same question, but we're going to use the WNC formula instead. The other formula that you can use is WNC equals to delta EP plus delta EK. Now, we've spoken about this in detail in the past, but WNC stands for non-conservative. And in summary, non-conservative forces are only things like applied forces or friction. Okay? That's only, the, those are the only non-conservative forces that you use. You don't use gravity. So now remember the formula for work is always equal to the force multiplied by the distance or the displacement times by cos theta. So over here, I'm going to put all the non-conservatives. So that will be the applied force plus the friction over there. And then over here, I'll have delta EP plus delta EK. I want to quickly show you the difference. You know, when we used W net, then we had for W net, you put everything. So we had WA plus WG parallel plus W, um, plus w friction equals to delta EK. But now we have taken the gravity away. Can you see we don't have any gravity here? How can we do that? It's simple because we've got a gravity over here with the potential, potential energy. So the formulas are actually very, very similar to each other uh, in a weird kind of way. I hope you can see that. Okay, so let's go fill everything in. So the applied force is obviously just going to be 700. I'm using this formula now times by uh, delta x, which is going to be four meters times by cos of zero because we're going upwards and the applied force is also going upwards. So that's zero degrees. Now the friction we already worked out in this example. So that's going to be negative 712.88. Negative 712.88 equals two. Now here's where MGH, so that's MGH final minus MGH initial. That's potential energy, right? And then the kinetic energy will be half mv squared final minus half mv squared initial. Right. So if we quickly just go type this on the calculator, that would be um, 2087, 2087.12. Now, some of you might be saying, Kevin, Kevin, where are we going to find the final height? Guys, it's OK. We just have to use a little bit of trigonometry. So if this is four, this is 30, we can work out this final height. No problem at all. We can use sin and we can say sin 30 equals to the height over four. And if you had to go work out that height, you would end up with two meters. So that is the final height. So the mass would be 70 times 9.8 times seven meters. Whoa, where did I get seven? I swear there's no seven. Um, two meters. Uh, minus the initial height. Well, the initial height is over here, so that'll be zero. So you can say 70 times 9.8 times zero plus a half times 70. The final velocity is what we are trying to find, and the initial velocity is zero. Okay, so I'm going to try get this by itself by moving uh, this over to the left hand side. This just becomes a zero, and this just becomes a zero. Okay, so I'm just going to move that over quickly. And I end up getting 715.12 equals to 35 V squared. Then I'm going to divide by 35, take the square root, and I get the same answer of 4.52 meters per second. All right, guys. So there we have it. Okay. Um,